Hello, I welcome you all in this course on refrigeration and air conditioning. Today we will solve one numerical and some logical problems in the area of refrigeration. We will start with the numerical. A 10 TR refrigeration system is required for a food storage locker. The evaporator temperature is minus 20 degrees centigrade and the condenser temperature is 50 degrees centigrade. The working fluid is R134A. The refrigerant is superheated by 5 degrees centigrade in the evaporator while coming uh, at the exit of the evaporator. The refrigerant is subcooled by 5 degrees centigrade at the exit of the condenser and before entering the expansion wall. The refrigerant compresses in double cylinder single acting reciprocating compressor having L by D as 1.1. L by D stands for length and diameter ratio of compressor <coughs> block and 80 percent of volumetric efficiency. The compressor runs at 1200 rpm. Calculate number one mass flow rate of refrigerant kg per minute, bore and stroke of compressor in millimeters and theoretical power required in kilowatts. We will start with the uh, thermophysical properties of uh, refrigerant and we will draw the processes on temperature entropy diagram. Temperature entropy diagram and uh, the vapor coming from the ref, uh, uh, evaporator is superheated by 5 degree centigrade. So, state 1 is the saturation state, state 2 is the superheated state. Then the vapor is compressed in a compressor, state 2 to state 3. From state 3 to state 4, desuperheating takes place. Desuperheating of the vapor takes place. 4 to 5, condensation of vapor in a condenser, and then subcooling 5 to 6, and 6 to 7 is expansion in expansion wall, and then boiling of refrigerant in evaporator from state 7 to state 2 uh, to produce a refrigerating effect. This is the entire cycle. Now, in this cycle enthalpy of state 1 that is H 1. H 1 is the enthalpy of saturated vapor at minus 20 degree centigrade, this is 50 degree centigrade. So, enthalpy as vapor at uh, minus 20 degree centigrade that is 386.55 kilo joules per kg. Enthalpy of state 2 is not known to us, but we know that from state 1 to state 2 there is a sensible heating and the heating temperature difference between state 2 and state 1 is 5 degree centigrade. <coughs> so, H 2 can be H 1 plus C P delta T. Now, and H 1 is enthalpy at state 1 that is 386.55. C P is the specific heat of vapor at state 1, saturated vapor at minus 20 degree centigrade. This value can be taken from the properties chart. At minus 20 degree centigrade, a specific heat of R 134A is 0.816. delta T is 5 degree centigrade. That gives the value of enthalpy at state 2 as 390.63 kilo joules per kg. We will note it here H 2 is equal to 390.63 kilo joules per kg. In order to find the compressor work, we need to have the enthalpy at state 3 also. Since it is in a superheated state, we do not have uh, properties of superheated state here, but we have enthalpy at state 4. If we know the temperature at state 3, we can find the enthalpy at state 3 as well. Temperature at state 3 is not known to us. We know one thing that property at state 2 is equal to property at state 3. So, property sorry, the entropy not property, entropy at state through 2 is equal to entropy at state 3. So, S 2 is equal to S 3. Now, S 2 we can find as S 1 plus C p natural log T 2 by T 1. This is a sensible heating process and during sensible heating the change in entropy can be written like this. Now, S 1 again at minus 20 degree centigrade can be taken from here minus 20 degree centigrade 
and entropy of vapor is 1.7413. Specific heat at minus 20 degree centigrade is again 0.816 natural log of T2 by T1. Now, T1 is equal to minus oh sorry 27 minus 20 plus 273 that is 253 Kelvin. It is superheated here by 5 degree centigrade. So, T 2 is 258 Kelvin. Now, we will be putting here 258 by 253 and this will give us S 2 S 1.7573 kilo joules per kg. That is the value of entropy at 2. So, from here we have calculated the entropy at state 2. And how we have calculated? We have taken the entropy at state 1 from the properties chart plus change in entropy C p natural log T 2 T 2 by T 1 using this relation we have calculated the entropy at state 2. And entropy at state 2 is 1.7573 kilo joules per kg. Sir, Kelvin. 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 Now, property at this uh, entropy at state 2 is equal to entropy at state 3. So, S 3 is equal to sorry S 3 is equal to S 2. So, S 3 is equal to 1.7573 kilo joules per kg Kelvin. S 4 is we know the value of S 4 that can be taken from the properties uh, of R 134A and S 4 is going to be is equal to sorry S 3 is going to be equal to S 4 plus C p natural log T 3 by T 4. Now, in this case T 4 is 50 plus 273 is equal to 2 323 Kelvin. S 3 is given here 1.7573. S 4 can be taken from here at 50 degree centigrade entropy at uh, 50 degree centigrade entropy of uh, uh, saturated vapor is 1.7072. Plus specific heat 1.246 natural log T 3 by T 4 is 323. So, we have taken entropy at this point plus change in entropy while heating from here to here and <coughs> we got this expression and from this expression natural log of T 3 by 323 is going to be equal to 0.04037 and from this we find the value of T 3 as 336.3 Kelvin. So, T 3 is 336.3 Kelvin. Once we have the value of T 3, once we have temperature at this state the C p T 3 minus T 4 <coughs> uh, will give the heat rejected, heat rejected during desuperheating or we can say that enthalpy at 3 H 3 is equal to enthalpy at 4 plus C p T 3 minus T 4. Enthalpy at 3 is equal to enthalpy at 4, enthalpy at 4 it means 50 degree centigrade temperature enthalpy of saturated vapor that is 423.44 plus C p 1.246 T 3 is 336.3 minus 323 and this will give the enthalpy at 3 as 440.01 kilo joules per kg. So, H 3 will note down here. 440.01 kilojoules per kg.
Now, after H3, we have to find the value of H5. H5 we can directly take from the properties diagram that is the uh, enthalpy of liquid by enthalpy of uh, uh, R134 A at 50 degree centigrade that is enthalpy of saturated liquid and this H5 is we can take from here it is 271.62 kilo joules per kg. Now, once we have the enthalpy at 5, the vapor is sub uh, is subcooled by 5 degree centigrade. So, it should come somewhere here, but because this is very close to the saturation line, we can always take this point at here on the saturation curve itself, it is normally taken like this. So, <laughs> the enthalpy at 6, enthalpy at 6 is equal to enthalpy at 5 plus because there is a subcooling of 5 degree centigrade Cp delta T enthalpy of 5 is sorry minus not minus it is minus not plus. So, H 5 is 271.62 minus C p of liquid refrigerant at 50 degree centigrade and C p of liquid refrigerant at 50 degree centigrade 1.556. Into five, and that will give the value of uh, H six as two hundred sixty three point eight kilojoules per kg. So H six is two hundred sixty three point eight kilojoules per kg. Now we have to find the refrigerating effect because superheating is taking place inside the evaporator. So refrigerating effect will be. H2 minus H7, S6 is equal to S7, S6 is equal to S7 because it is an isoenthalpic expansion process and that is equal to 390.63 minus 263.8 and is equal to 126.83 kilojoules per kg. In order to find the mass flow rate of refrigerant, the total refrigerating capacity is 10 tons of refrigeration, 10 tons of refrigeration means 10 into 3.5 kilowatts of heat removal rate multiplied by R that is 126.83 and this will give the mass flow rate as 0.276 kg per second or 16.56 kg per minute. So, mass flow rate is 0.276 kg per second or 16.56 kg per minute. Now, we have mass flow rate of refrigerant with us. <laughs> with this mass flow rate of refrigerant, we can always find the power consumed inside the compressor and with this mass flow rate, we can also find the size of the compressor. Now, in order to find the dimensions of the cylinder as uh, we have to find in this numerical bore and stroke of the compressor. So, first of all we will calculate the swept volume of each compressor that is pi by 4 d square into stroke of the compressor multiplied by rpm divided by 60 that is revolutions per second that is the total volume handled by the compressor. It is a double uh, cylinder compressor this is the total volume handled by per compressor per second meter cube per second multiplied by volumetric efficiency will give us the actual volume of refrigerant vapor handed by the compressor per second and that is going to be equal to 0. Point, that is e going to be equal to mass flow rate of refrigerant divided by 2 because there are two compressors. So, each compressor is handling half of the refrigerant multiplied by specific volume of vapor. Now, we know the relation between L and D, L by D is equal to 1.1. So, we can always write pi by 4 D square into 1.1 D into 1200 divided by 60, volumetric efficiency is 0.8, mass flow rate is 
सेवन सिक्स डिवाइड बाई टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जीरो पॉइंट वन टू फाइव एंड दिस विल गिव अस द डी क्यूब एस वन पॉइंट टू फोर एट इंटू टेन टू पावर माइनस थ्री मीटर क्यूब और डी एस जीरो पॉइंट वन जीरो सेवन सिक्स मीटर और वन जीरो सेवन पॉइंट सिक्स मिलीमीटर और अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन जीरो एट मिलीमीटर सो डी इज इक्वल टू ऑफ ईच कंप्रेसर इज वन जीरो एट मिलीमीटर मल्टीप्लाई दिस डी बाई इंटू वन 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 पॉइंट वन विल गिव अस एल सो लेंथ ऑफ द स्ट्रोक इज वन वन एट पॉइंट एट मिलीमीटर एंड दैट इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन वन नाइन मिलीमीटर सो लेंथ ऑफ द स्ट्रोक इज वन वन नाइन मिलीमीटर Now the last one is power consumed by the compressor. Power consumed by the compressor is H three minus H two multiplied by mass flow rate of refrigerant. Now H three is four four zero point zero one minus H two. H two is three ninety point six three. multiplied by mass flow rate that is 0.276 and this will give the power consumed by the compressor as 13.63 kilowatt so power consumed by the compressor is here we'll write power is 13.63 kilowatt now we have answers for all uh, parts of this numerical now the same numerical can be used can be solved by using ph diagram we can also show this processes on ph diagram now in ph diagram this is minus 20 degree centigrade line and this is 50 degree centigrade line vapor is superheated by 5 degree centigrade in evaporator this minus 20 this is minus 20 degree centigrade constant temperature line This is minus 10 degree centigrade constant temperature line. So 15 degree centigrade constant temperature line will lie somewhere here, and if we extend this line, this is the state two. So this is state one, and this one is state two. Now after state two, it is getting compressed, and we attain state three. So this 50 degree centigrade line constant pressure line is extended. and a line is drawn along the constant entropy line and we will be getting this point somewhere here that is state that is state 3 that is state 3 now after state 3 de superheating and state 4 is attained state 4 is attained and after state 4 further condensation of uh, refrigerant in the condenser is state 5 this is state 5 at state 5 the temperature is 50 degree centigrade since subcooling here subcooling is taking place by 5 degree so this is a 50 constant temperature 50 degree centigrade line this is constant temperature 40 degree centigrade line so 45 degree centigrade is going to be somewhere here and this point will shift to 6 here is a point 6 now from 6 to 7 expansion takes place it is a vertical line cutting horizontal minus 20 degree centigrade line and we will be getting point sorry point 7 somewhere here this is point 7 so we have drawn all the points here if we take the values from this chart at different states the values are like this h2 is equal to 390 kJ per kg h3 is equal to 440 kJ per kg h2 we can take from here it is 390 h3 is equal to 440 and h6 is equal to 265 kJ per kg now here if we take the refrigerating effect refrigerating effect is h2 minus h7 
and the tonnage is uh, uh, 10 tons of refrigeration. So, mass flow rate is 10 into 3.5 divided by H2 minus S7 that is 390 minus 265 and that is going to be equal to 0 0.8 kg per second. From the properties chart also we were getting 0 0.276 and <laughs> this will give us is equal to 16.8 kg per minute. Work consumed by the compressor W is equal to 0 0.28 h 3 minus h 2. So, h 3 minus h 2 we will take the directly from here 440 minus 390 and this compressor work is coming 14 kilowatt. So, either we solve using this properties uh, table or from pH diagram we are going to get almost the same values, but this pH diagram is very convenient to use. You can see when we have take uh, when we have solved this numerical using temperature entropy diagram number of iterations were done number of equations were solved but here from pH diagram we could directly take the values of enthalpies at different states now after the pH diagram in the area of refrigeration there is there are certain logical queries like if we open the door if we leave the uh, door of a refrigerator open in a room will the room the temperature of the room will go down or not in this case, if in a room, room is a control volume, if we keep a refrigerator and leave that refrigerator room door open, the room will not get cooled. Because here we consider room as a system and there is no heat transfer across the boundary of the room, right. Whatever energy is coming to the room, it is in the form of electrical work and that electrical work the energy will increase the temperature of the room. So, in fact, if in this room if I keep a refrigerator and leave the, re, uh, the door of the refrigerator open the temperature of this room will rise. There are certain other interesting queries also in refrigeration like a woman informs an engineer that she frequently feels cooler in summer when in standing in front of an open refrigerator. The engineer tells her that this is not possible as there is no fan in the refrigerator to blow the cold air over her. So, when you you must have also felt when you open the refrigerator door you feel <coughs> you get a feeling of low temperature from the refrigerator side. The reason being when you are standing in front of an open door refrigerator the temperature inside the refrigerator is low. So, the heat loss from your body in form of conduction and convection heat transfer takes place and that gives you the feeling of coldness in front of a refrigerator. Now, there is third inquiry which is the hot water will freeze faster than cold water in a refrigerator, is it true? Some people conducted the experiment and what they took, they took hot water in, in, in a tray and placed in the refrigerator freezer and noted the time for the ice formation, then they took the tap water placed inside the freezer of a refrigerator and noted the uh, ice formation time. Ice formation time for hot water was less than the ice formation time for cold water. So, in this case actually this is thermodynamically it is not possible. If the temperature is high definitely more time will be taken by the machine to remove the heat. But what happens when you keep the hot water tray in the uh, freezer? This happens in old refrigerator where defreezing arrangement was not there. So, the all the ice which is formed on the evaporator coil gets melted. So, the moment you place the hot water plate inside the freezer, the all the ice on uh, the freezer coil gets melted that is why the refrigerating effect is improved and uh, the formation of ice is faster. However, in the case when you place the normal water inside the freezer, the the this ice layer on the uh, or the frosting on the uh, evaporator coil remains there and that hampers the heat transfer of the cooling rate and we get the feeling that the hot temperature water ice is faster than the cold water ice, but this is not thermodynamically it is or scientifically it is not possible and it happens only in the case when there is a no defrosting arrangement because in the old refrigerator there was no arrangement for defrosting. So, in those refrigerators where defrosting uh, arrangement is not there, this type of elusive effect can be witnessed. 
Now, I end my lecture here and from the le next lecture, we will start with the properties of refrigerants.